It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So recently I picked up this game box model. I came across it on a website. I was more like, I need to check it out what it is. So when you're looking at these game boxes, some of them look pretty damn awesome, but I really love the description on the boxes. Professional game chip, you know, like comment. TV, double rocker control, like absolutely freaking hilarious. If you look at some of those, like say, like text, it's like, what the hell is going on? But nevertheless, we're going to get ourselves quad core, 64 bit. Like there is no like absolutely good description saying what it is. So let's do a quick unboxing because I think that is something we just need to do. So on top, we're going to get ourselves the game system. And I'm just going to be honest, I was slightly disappointed. And the reason is very simple. Like this is absolutely like an Android box. That's what they're doing. We're also going to do a tear down here. But this Android TV box that we're basically saying here at the bottom, it needs a 12 volt one amp power supply. It does have like USB ports at the side. <sighs> okay, so they're like freaking USB 2.0, no 3.0 whatsoever. So they're like very old tech. And TV, F slot or an basically an SD card. So do we have like the option for a LAN, AV out, SPIF, HDMI out and input for the power supply. But this thing feels very lightweighted and plastic fantastic. Inside the box, we're going to get ourselves two controllers and yep, they're like the same chemical controls we've seen many times before. But the first thing we need to do is smell it. <sighs> it's chemical, oh yeah. But how is the feel? So this is not like the worst quality. They're like the ones that are okay. I mean, like they have like really nice rubber compound on the joysticks, but oh my, you're gonna hear it. Like, uh, nevertheless, like this is really, oh, it's okay quality. Like when you're looking at the shoulder buttons, you feel it like this. You can feel it when, when the, let's say this way, when you're having the controller, they have like way too much travel and they are like very cheap feel. And you're doing basically this movement over the buttons. You can just feel it. So it's okay. The D-pad is kind of sturdy, but an overall quality, it's the same stuff we've seen many times before. And of course, in compartment for two AAA batteries. But let's see what we're going to get in here. This is an Android box. We do have like a remote. So then we have, let's see. A keychain? Okay, that keychain is pretty cool. Let's take a close look at the keychain. They give me a free keychain. Oh yeah, this keychain is pretty damn awesome. Okay, so then how are we having the power supply? So there's one thing that is quite concerning and this is like the Android box. I wonder, it's like, what are we going to get? Because there isn't a TF card in here or an SD card. So this is also something I need to show you. So this thing runs on Amy Alec. That's something you can just basically like download for free, but the I don't know why, but they removed the amount of like size of the card. That's kind of weird. Like, why would you do that? Like, nevertheless, you know, let's plug this thing back in. Let's plug it in and let's see what we're going to get. So like I already mentioned before, this is an Android box. And this is basically the first boot up screen you will see over here. So when everything seems to be configured correctly, you will get like the Amy Alec menu or better said, the, the software itself. And later on when booting up, you will get the menu. Well, what I did notice, this is a special modified version. Uh, this theme that they're using looks kind of cool. And also you can see like we do have like the Gamebox intro logo. So they're slightly different and modified when you're looking at them. Let's say your typical Amy Alec you can download for free on the internet. So when booted up, this is what we're going to get when it comes to the menu or with this Gamebox. So what I think is pretty damn cool with these game boxes, we have so much cool stuff that we can play. For the people just tuning in and stuff like this, basically with an Emmy Alec and a basic Android device, you can play up to PlayStation 1 without any hassle. N64 will always be the problem, like a lot of stuff that will not run well or not at all. So N64 will be always the problem. You need to have more power to run that properly on every single, let's say, kind of in resolution or better set every single game. Sega Saturn is a new addition to this. Absolutely amazing. I think it's pretty damn cool, my opinion. But when you're looking at it, there is so much stuff you can play with these cheap boxes. That's a fact. So for the people wondering what kind of theme they're using, they're using the Art Pie theme for it. It's pretty damn cool. I really like it. And over here you can see like it's the Emmy Alec AS version 4.3 mod that's basically running on this machine. Another thing I really don't like about this bad boy is that we don't have an on and off switch. A little bit of a maybe me being nitpicky about it, but it's something you can sometimes find on these devices and something you don't. And if you need to shut it down, you can do it through the software. So basically what you're going to do is go into the quit over here and when you choose this, you can shut down the system. 
But when you want to reboot it, you need to unplug the power every single time, so it's not really convenient. I don't want to focus too much on the old stuff, because that runs just fine on a system like this. I personally really love the side bezels. If you just want to remove it, you can remove it if you want to. Another problem I'm noticing a lot with PlayStation 1, the files that you basically add to it, or basically sometimes they add for you, that we don't have the option to basically have a background song. And they just ripped the file wrong. It's a little bit of a bummer that they do that, because I see this thing coming back every single time you boot up a game. There's no music whatsoever. The soul of the game is lost. And I think that's absolutely a bummer. And a big one. But the overall performance, of course, like I said, like PlayStation 1, runs just fine on this. It is on native resolution, because these boxes are not more powerful than other run on high resolutions. Especially when you're running this on a high-end PC, you can get even more better performance and like more like crazy gameplay out of this. For a cheap box, I think it's pretty damn awesome. I'm basically just driving around, you know, like doing nothing. <laughs> Alright, so next up I wanted to try some PlayStation Portable. I'm just going to be honest, like a lot of games run like shit. So two-dimensional games like Metal Slug, where you can see on the background, it glitches out. It's still playable, you'll find it with maybe in Soul Calibur, it runs fine. But you will have, let's say, some glitches. And some games have some hiccups. But again, if you don't mind, it's just a different way to play. Okay, so next up for the test, I wanted to try out some Mortal Kombat 2. This is the most demanding game they can find on a box like this. Games like Killer Stink will not run whatsoever, so don't even think about trying it out. However, we do have like a lot of problems with Pandora's box with games like these, or the cheaper boxes. Dude, I'm just going to punch you in the balls. That is the way, how you will to play, punch him in the balls, because that's the scorpion way. Alright, so next up, let's try N64, I already told you, like a lot of stuff will not run very well on this. Great example is of course Cruise in the USA, a very high demanding game. Conquer Bad Fur Day, GoldenEye, stuff like that. And it's basically what happens. It stutters, it glitches, and it a lot of issues. And these games are just basically unplayable. But don't get me wrong, like a lot of launch titles like Diddy Kong Farting runs just fine. And fine, I mean like in the best way that you can handle like games like those on a cheap Android box. But you get the point. <laughs> Glitch in the USA! <laughs> so I wanted to try out some Sega Saturn and realize something. They are naughty. Because they are not even on the freaking device. Yeah, <sighs> That is something that in a different way. Something I've never seen before. Alright, so let's do a quick teardown. I find it quite annoying that they, yeah, using a cheap case like this, like fully made out of plastic, and there are no screws. Oh, I am guessing that I need to use my prior tools, so let's get me one of those. And let's see if we can unbuck this freaking thing. Oh man, this thing has some weird interiors, but let's see if we have some space somewhere. Yeah, see, that's always the question, like how can we open this up? We just do it like that. There is no screw attached and <laughs> we're looking at the size of the case you're thinking we're going to get a like a gigantic pcb in the inside but it's just another android box of course all right so let's get these two screws loose and let's take a close look at what are we going to get in the inside oh almost we're getting one over here i really lost these aliexpress kits i bought them like some time ago a couple of them super easy Alright, so let's see, I didn't miss out anyone, no. 
I can tell you like the board is getting really hot after using for a couple of hours. There is something that is basically not letting my freaking thing go. What is it? Ah, there it is. Okay, wow. Okay. So yeah, so I don't know why they use this. Why do they want to transfer the heat from this PCB to the plastic? It is transferring something, but wow, it's absolutely hot, man. Like this thing is like sticky and freaking hot as it can be. Oh man, what a mess. I can tell you that. Let's see if we can remove this over here. Yeah, I always need to be very careful. Oh, there we go. Okay, so they just slapped this on here. So what a mess is this? Oh boy. Aha, so that explains, for example, the Sega Saturn situation. So I already can see it's like I removed it, but I basically removed it for nothing. And the reason why, because if we're going to remove this, we I think we will see what kind of chip it is. Let's clean it up a little bit. Uh, let's clean it up a little bit more. So here you can see indeed is that this is the G of the S905L model. I don't know if you can see it on the camera because it's filthy and you need to have a kind of a reflection to see it. But the S905L is basically the chip they are using. There's an old school quad core. It's just similar like the Super Console X. And what I do we honest like when you're looking at the modified version with Sega Saturn, what I understand of normally it won't run on these kind of very weird old boards. So it's kind of interesting to be honest. So we do have like the store chip over here, two RAM chips. So yeah, it's nothing really fancy to be honest. Like when you're looking at this over here, especially when you're looking at the production date, you can see like this is the S905. It has been produced in a completely different year, 2016. So this thing is pretty damn old. So just using, this is just a great way of reusing old technology. So it's better than throwing it away, of course, but I just wanted to say like, this is what they're doing. This is the same stuff that we're seeing with the Super Console X, only a different name, different image, and the same yadi yadi. It also explains why a lot of problems like with PSP is still the same like with the Super Console X. Before I go to put it together, I just briefly want to talk about the cooling. So normally what you need to do is putting the cooling block on here. That basically gives you like the best cooling solution for your CPU, GPU situation. But what they did is like slapping that on here and using this thing, the thermal paste for basically transferring it to the plastic. Like, wow, just wow. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to get with the new game box. And I am quite disappointed, I can say you that, simply because when you look at the way how they made it, like the controllers, hmm, they were not like too chemical and they seem to be working just fine. So I give that a pass. But when you're looking at the game box itself, man, oh man, what an just and pointless thing it is. I'm more like we're back to square one with this S905 stuff. I was hoping we were going to get something new, uh, something exciting, but it's the same stuff all over again. I did see like a lot of you like leave it in the comments and I absolutely like, Oh, sometimes it's quite like annoying to review these things. But again, hey, we know what we're going to get with this one. Like, especially when it comes to the, the cooling. I'm hoping they didn't like implement the cooling method with every single one because that's going to be quite like a bummer because yeah, this thing is not going to get any cooling if the cooling or the peasant cooling is not in place. But I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. And it would be great to see you in the next video.